Joining us to tell us more about the process is Ben Lamb. He's the co-founder and CEO of Colossal Biosciences. Ben, thanks so much for being here. Um, all right, just to be clear, you have no plans to bring back dinosaurs, but, you know, that is potentially where it could lead, isn't it? So we get the dinosaur question all the time. You I know, know. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how you feel, there is no dino DNA, and there's also not megalodon DNA. So those died off way too long ago. Right now, the oldest DNA we use is about 1.2 million years old, which is some of our mammoth and our step mammoth DNA. So don't worry about dinosaurs. It's not possible to bring back dino DNA. That went extinct 65 million years ago. All right. So I got to ask, why are you doing this? Uh, and where are these dire wolves going to live? Because wouldn't they eat everything in sight? So the dire wolves are not in Texas, just to be clear. Like, we get that question a lot. I want to make that very clear because the woolly mice are so objectively cute. We had a lot of uninvited guests that came to the lab. You know, our lab is not open to the public. And so there are no woolly mice at our lab uh, that's that, that's in Texas. And there is no dire wolves at our lab. So I want to make that clear so that we don't have lots of excited people showing up. So the dire wolves actually live on a 2,000 acre uh, secure, expansive ecological preserve in the northern part of the United States. They've got a 10 person care team. They're certified by American Humane Society, the oldest humane organization uh, in the U.S., and we're constantly monitoring them and studying them to understand what the long-term potential for rewilding extinct species uh, could be over time. That's a very thoughtful exercise. That's not going to happen anytime soon. All right, so you know I'm sure that biologists in Wyoming have come out with an op-ed saying the dire wolves would destroy everything in their path if they were reintroduced into nature. You say they're on a big preserve, so they won't be out in the in the free open land. That, that's correct. They're on a secure, expansive ecological preserve, right? So we've got some of the most state-of-the-art security uh, and teams actually monitoring them 24/7. As I mentioned, they have a full-time 10-person uh, care team plus a security team. So we're not looking to put them back. We actually are working on some pretty cool uh, technology with uh, Yellowstone and a few others around bioacoustics to actually monitor where existing wolves go but no we're not intending to rewild the dire wolves anytime soon how but many it is really and are they going to reproduce these three that you've created yes yeah, so we're actually going to probably engineer a couple more so that we could have a perfect pack size of like five to eight that's where a lot of wolf packs typically uh, uh grow to so we're not going to allow them to to currently uh reproduce we are going to engineer a few more just so that we can monitor them but this is incredibly important for conservation because it's forecasted that we're going to lose up to 50 percent of all biodiversity between now and 2050 and we know that modern conservation is fantastic it's just not working at the speed at which we're eradicating species Okay, uh, dumb question maybe, but why not work just to save a species that are about to go extinct? Why go dig up species that have long been dead and gone from the planet and bring them back? It's a, it's a great Only question. to live in captivity, by the way. A nice yeah, captivity, but a captivity yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, so our goal with uh, a lot of our species, like our dodo project, our thylacine project, and even our woolly mammoth project, is to reintroduce those species back into the wild in collaboration with indigenous people groups, private landowners, and the government. So we actually are working with uh, one very large uh, indigenous people group that would love to have dire wolves back on their sovereign land, but it's just a very long process. Who is that? I, I mean, these, that these wolves are massive. <laughs> These are so it's MHA Nation uh, out of North Dakota, which is fantastic. They have an actually ancestral and spiritual connection to them, which is pretty amazing. But it's really important. This is not an or question; it's an and question. So all the technologies that we make on the path to the extinction, we actually can use and open source for the entire world to use for conservation. We actually made four red wolves, which is pretty amazing. So not only you know the dire wolves because of Game of Thrones get all the attention, it also gets kids super excited about science. It brings new attention. It allows to build new technologies. But it's also being applied right now to conservation. So we're actually working with the federal government and others uh, on the Red Wolf Conservation Project, which is the only endemic wolf only to the United States. And it's the most endangered wolf in the entire world. All right. And the woolly mammoths and the saber-toothed tigers, they're going to be we're like... not working on saber-toothed tigers. It's a fan favorite, just like dinosaurs. But we're not we're working not gonna on saber We're not going to happen. Okay. We're not working. Ben Lamb. What could go wrong, Ben? I don't know. I could think of a few things, but it's pretty cool and exciting uh, that you guys have been working on this. Thank you so it's a, much. It's a, huge, 
It's a huge American first in terms of genetic engineering and conservation. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.